wanted to give everyone an update on the 2021 TPI. I've got about 15 hours on the bike now. Uh, not a lot of hours, but enough hours to, to discover a couple small issues. And I've done a couple of new mods to the bike since the last video. So I wanted to show everyone those. Um, first up, I put the FMF Turbid Core 2.1 on here. Uh, I actually was running this. This was the Fish Moto Spark Arrestor insert. It's about $80, and I figured it was uh, a good, inexpensive way to add a Spark Arrestor to the stock pipe. Turns out this thing made the bike run like crap. Uh, it, you can see how it mounts to the stock pipe just like this. It was uh, apparently a little too restrictive, and the bike just would not run clean through the mid-range. It refused to rev, real sputtery and blubbery. So I had to take it out, uh, had to go with the FMF. Uh, I went with the 2.1 because it is the bigger pipe, a little bit quieter than the 2, the Turbine Core 2. And I don't know, it sounds good. I like quiet pipes. Next little mod I've done before I, before I touch on the issues that I had with the bike, um, I'll touch on the other mod I did, which, which was the clean speed brake pedal. It moves the brake pedal back just a little bit. Uh, so if you have like size nine boots like I do, it means you don't have to move your boot so far forward on the peg to use the rear brake. And so far I'm really, really enjoying that as well. Uh, another thing, it's not a new mod, but something I've had on my previous bike as well. If you've seen any of my other videos, this is the Moto Minded Stout Mount. It puts your phone right where you want it or GPS for that matter. And I, I really like how solid it mounts. I'm using the perfect squeeze phone mount. That's this piece right here. Uh, holds the phone very solidly. I've had the bike upside down and the phone is totally stable and it's actually pretty well protected. Although I use like an old deactivated iPhone 7 for running GPS, but um, so I'm not too worried if it gets broken. But, uh, really like the mount. Um, for my GPS app, I'm using Gaia, Gaia GPS, a uh, really great app. Uh, I pay for the subscription, gives you access to a whole bunch of different trail maps. And uh, I really have been liking the, the ability to sync between devices as well. So I can lay out a route on my desktop computer. It syncs automatically to the phone and off I go. Next little thing is just sort of a tip. I don't remember who told me this one. Um, but it's make a color photocopy of your license plate, laminate it, and use it for your license plate. That way it doesn't get all banged up. Um, my license plates get pretty mangled, and I figure uh, it looks legit enough from a distance, and the kind of law enforcement you might encounter out on the trail or fire roads probably are going to be pretty chill about it. Uh, I still carry the legit license plate in my backpack, uh, but this way the, the real license plate doesn't get mangled. If I do get asked for my plate, at least I've got the real one with me. So hopefully that's not too big a deal. Um, out on the street, you might get hassled a bit more about that. 2021 KTM Husky, they have not fixed the power valve leak. I'm sure you guys have heard about this one. Uh, mine is leaking just a tiny bit. It's gonna be really hard for me to show you here. Um, I haven't washed the bike, so you can kinda, oh, it's hard to see there. Just kinda, you kinda see it right in there. Um, that little dribble kinda, dirty dribble there is the leak um, coming from the power valve cover. Mine's not too bad. This is not too bad. I haven't washed this thing in at least a couple hours of ride time. And so you can see that it's not too bad. I'm not losing a lot of oil. Um, the 2019 parts will fix it, the gaskets from a 2019. Um, I'm probably not going to bother with it unless it gets a lot worse, but it's frustrating that KTM has not addressed the issue yet. The other thing I noticed about the bike, as delivered, the idle was just too low. So I would come to a stop with the clutch pulled in, and occasionally, not very often, the bike would die just because it was idling pretty low. And so, again, I'm sure you guys have heard that to adjust the idle on a stock bike, you use the air screw, which is right here, which is not the ideal way to do it. Um, I tried using the air screw. I ended up having to go almost four turns out to get it to idle where I wanted it, which isn't ideal. So I went with the Slavin's idle screw and you can see it way down under here. I don't know if you can even see that at all. Um, there's the idle screw. It's uh, a much easier way to adjust the idle. And now I can set the air screw at about a half a turn out, which is where I think it runs really, really well. Here's the other adjustment I made. You can see my power valve adjuster is uh, not quite flush with the casing. So as delivered, the bike uh, felt like it was a little flat through the mid-range. 
um, a little soft, and then it just had uh, a crazy hit when you got to the top end. And the hit was almost unmanageable. Like I think, think the first time I rode the bike, uh, it took me off guard a bit. Just was not used to that. So uh, I messed with the power valve. I've turned it uh, a quarter turn at a time out and ridden it a few minutes just to kind of get a feel for it. Ended up going all the way flush with the casing there. And then now you can see I'm back in, I think it's about a turn, maybe a turn and a half back in. It's kind of where I like it. Um, but really what you're doing is you're, you're filling in the mid range. You're making the overall power, power delivery much more linear. And I really like it. I think it's more manageable, it's more controllable, and it's just a lot of fun. Those are really the two issues I have with the bike, the low idle, the leaky power valve, um, the fact that it doesn't come with a spark arrestor stock, we all know it's a, a big miss on KTM's part, but I've got this thing running right where I like it. I think it's ideal and really, really pleased with the bike. So at 15 hours, I think it's pretty well broken in. Forks are broken in, suspension feels great. Whatever they've done to the mid valve on these 2021 AER forks is phenomenal. This thing really just soaks up the bumps. Very confidence inspiring and it just asks to be pushed harder. Do it that way. 